I'll give them one minute. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Board of Education workshop. Today is December 17th, 2020. Could I have the attendance, please? Sure. Mrs. Giftis? Dr. Gill? Here. Ms. Cavalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Mr. Bennett? Here. And Ms. Giftis? Okay, could you join me in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, Kelly, if you could advance the slide deck, that would be great. So the main focus of tonight's workshop is to discuss our 2021 board goals. Um, in past years, we've done this earlier in the year, but we all know that this has been anything but a typical year. And so here we are, December, and we're gonna get this done um, hopefully tonight and make the most of the time that we have left for this school year. And then our goals typically carry over into the fall of the next school year. Um, what I have posted on the slide is the two ob overarching objectives that we arrived on last year. And then underneath those are the SMART goals that we set um, as a group to kind of focus and, and guide our work. Um, one thing that does typically come up at this workshop is uh, the question of whether or not these goals are our goals or whether they're Sandy's goals or our, our superintendent's goals. Um, and I think in the past we've um, framed it really well by saying that Sandy acts as our conduit to the rest of the school. And so while these are the group, these are the <clears throat> goals that we develop as a board and as an elected body, um, a lot of this work centers around making sure that Sandy can help us to facilitate achieving um, what are the measurable goals that, that we establish as a group. And so they're not necessarily Sandy's goals um, to achieve on his own, but they do guide our work for the next uh, 12 months. And so last year we had said, that our objective was to promote and grow a district-wide culture of trust, transparency, and collaboration. And then we had three SMART goals underneath that. Um, <clears throat> for anyone who's not familiar with the term SMART goals, and I probably should have posted this up on the slide just so that we had it, but um, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Action, Realistic, and Time-Oriented. Um, and so basically it's just an acronym to, you know, remind all of us that when we write our goals, we should try and do it in a way that is specific to something that's measurable and within a certain amount of time and that, that kind of thing. Um, and then our second main objective last year was to establish a plan to address facilities and growth specifically at the K2 level. In June, we, asked Sandy to do a self-evaluation and he used um, the framework that we had established at our goal setting workshop to do his self-evaluation. And so we actually have reviewed, done like a mid-year review of these goals um, last June. 
And so this isn't the first time that we're revisiting them in a year. But with that said, um, and I don't really want to belabor this this evening because we all know this was anything but a typical year. Um, it's been hard <laughs> to for to make sure that we are always um, being goal driven in a year when a lot of times we were just surviving. Um, and so while there are certainly areas that we could improve and could have done better to achieve some of the goals that we set for last year, um, I think that as a body and as a board, it's good to look at what we set for goals last year and maybe start from here in terms of whether this is something that we want to work towards in 2021 or whether we want to adapt new objectives and, and make a fresh start. And obviously our SMART goals for this year are going to be different than they have in the past um, in that a lot of the things that we had set as SMART goals, like quarterly visits to the schools, um, just aren't achievable at this time. And so with optimism in mind, I would like to set some SMART goals that, you know, will carry us beyond the pandemic, but then also recognize that that's a huge constraint um, on our ability to get some stuff done right now. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to open the floor to anyone who would like to speak to either last year's goals or kind of um, your thoughts on either modifying these goals that we set last year or whether you'd like to propose um, a new goal for 2021. No one is raising their hand. Leanne. Yeah. Um, I would add that on, you know, while we did establish that plan to address the facilities and growth, I think there's still work to be done there. Um, and I'd love to include a goal that would include making sure that we adequately fund or plan on funding towards the next steps in that process. Okay. Sarah, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, I, I was trying to find my blue hand too. No, um, that's okay. It, is this all of them or is there another slide? I thought we had a finance one too. So I, I had remembered that too um, and I went back and watched the workshop and we had a really lengthy discussion about our finance goals and to, aside from just conducting the, the analysis of the budget process and whatever under the second goal of objective one on the slide that we're looking at. Um, there's also a working document that I sent you guys this week to review that kind of lays things out um, And I'll drop that into the chat. Oh, yeah, okay. Can I do that? So I would maybe consider, maybe we wanna be like, modify the one around the budget. Um, because it's pretty broad, and I think to some extent we did that last year. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could keep it in there, and it's you know kind of like a continuous improvement model, right? But um, April, just as a point of information, the webinar mode that we have set up does not have a chat. So if you're looking, for thank you. Thank you, Diane. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna quickly email, re-email the link so that if everybody wants to open the document on the on their computer, they can. And then I will make sure that I ask Kelly to post the link um, to the website so that people have access to this document. Yeah. So I, um, I guess just to go back to the. Do you want us to make suggestions, April, now? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just some feedback 
from Leanne and Kristen or, or other board members too, okay, I think, but I, maybe we, sh we scrap that because I think we've analyzed and analyzed and analyzed the budget process and I think we all know it quite well, um, strengths and its weaknesses. And so I don't necessarily think that that should be a focus for us. Um, while I do think there are areas of improvement, I'm not necessarily sure it's, it's required to be a goal. Does that make sense? And do people yep. agree with that? Mm -hmm. okay. So, I, I attached, I did attach a doc um, to the presentation tonight, which is right now it's just a blank um, Google doc that we can capture tonight's workshop, workshop on. Um, and so if I could get a volunteer who would be willing to jot notes as we workshop onto that Google doc, that would be incredibly helpful. Otherwise I'll just transcribe on paper and I'll type it up later. Um, I think so in terms of direction and moving the conversation forward, I think we need to decide um, whether or not the objectives that we have here are objectives that we want to carry through with and continue on with, or whether we want to set new objectives. So let's maybe refocus the conversation on those two points. And then to Sarah's point, like then under our objective, we'll go back and really analyze and decide what we want to do for a finance goal. Makes sense. So how do people feel about objective one? I guess I'll just, I'm, I'm muted, so maybe, I, I think we still have some work to do there, and I would like to see that still be a priority. I would agree with Sarah. I think that is a place we still have work to do, and would also like to see that be a priority for us. Okay. Anyone else? April, I can take notes. I don't, I don't know if anyone else volunteered. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I, I definitely agree um, that there are certainly new goals that we could set for that objective. Um, and this was kind of where my, where my mind was trying to make um, some COVID accommodations, but then also think beyond um, this school year in terms of what we could do um, for actionable goals. But I know Sarah and I had had a conversation about um, changing some of the um, ways that we had run finance in the past. And so there might be a goal um, that we can establish um, that will come out of that. In terms of um, you know, having high visibility in the schools, obviously that's not something that's attainable right now, but is there, is there a way that we as a board feel that we can better connect um, even in a time when we can't be in the building? And is that something that, you know, the board is interested in pursuing? Well, I saw on the document you sent over that you had um, had an idea down to um, have staff attend our workshops. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea for us to, you know, just thinking a little outside the box as to what we can do right now, that is something we can do. And it, I, I think it brings visibility to perhaps departments and areas we wouldn't always hear from or wouldn't always see and, you know, gets us a little bit more involved at the school level as well. So I think it's a great idea. Yep, absolutely. And so I think um, one of our goals for last year had been specifically to uh, invite some kind of faculty or staff oriented um, or to have a staff or faculty, faculty oriented workshop once a quarter. And so if we made it that specific and we said, okay, so you know, if we divide the years into the year into quarters, what is going to be our winter session and, and really lay that out and say, this is what we, you know, you know, and obviously getting advice and recommendations from the admin as to what our winter session could be, you know, what's our spring session going to be? What's our summer session going to be? What's our fall session going to be?
<laughs> I, I assume that was a gift us that sneezed because they're both giggling. They're it both was, on mute. It was too. Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless you. Thank you. She was just having computer problems and coming on the new one. I thought she was muted. Sorry. Uh, but I was going to say that um, one of the concerns that I have about these goals is that we don't have any way to carry them out on a regular basis. And so I, I wonder if we should do about one um, meeting a, a month or something to discussing them and, and setting action items. Um, I know that there was a time w w where we would discuss going into the schools and then, and then there were like, and then it became like objectionable maybe to some people and, and there was, there's no way to carry it forward. And so um, setting the goals are great, but if we don't have any way to turn those into realistic action items or committee work or something, then I don't know how we realistically make any gains towards the goals. So I absolutely share that sentiment. And one thing that I had thought of and, Y'all are more than welcome to tell me that this is not the right direction. But one thing I had thought of was that if we put this down as a goal, then every committee should have this on their agenda for their next meeting. And that way, at the committee level, a discussion of board goals and how to put something into place happens at each committee. And then we report back at the next full, at the next full meeting or when we do committee updates and say, this is the discussion that our committee had around goals. This is, you know, one action item that we came up with or something. Because I, I agree with you. Um, th it's great to set these goals, but if we don't revisit them and it's almost as if we need to have a goal to stay on top of our goals <laughs> because it's, you know, it's always with the best of intentions but then we get busy doing the work of being a functioning school board and if, you know, and, and obstacles come up and, you know, we, something imminent pops up and a workshop shop gets pushed. And the next thing we know, we haven't worked on our goals in a few months. So that's definitely a challenge. Um, and that's why I was really kind of focusing on what are our action items going to be so that it's easy to go back and say, did we schedule a winter session? No. Okay. We need to address that. But we can also, I mean, I can also make it part of a reoccurring chairs report. I mean, that could be at one of our goals that, you know, we revisit this and that it's the chair's responsibility to, to bring up the board goals, once a month or something. It depends on how focused we think we, you know, how much managing of this we think we need. I think that that would be good. I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed about the lack of progress that we've made towards our goals, but, um, you know, given the circumstances, I don't think that it could have been any different, but I do think that we need to really be serious about it now. Sarah and then Nick. I'm gonna say something that might be a little annoying, but it's, it's bothered me all year. And I, and I, well, first of all, I agree with, with what Alicia said in April. I think that we should, um, I like the idea of kind of taking it to the committee level and having the committees come up with objectives that get us to our goal. I think we need to swap what we're calling a goal and an objective. The goal should be the, the top level. The objective should be the actionable steps that, that get us there. Um, so sorry if that's annoying, but <laughs> I think if we just change that and then, and, then the, and then we all agree on the goal, right? And then how we get there can be defined at the committee level and those become the objectives. But as long as we kind of all agree on what that top line goal is so to me that's semantics and i trust that the people who are in positions where they have leadership meetings and team building and <laughs> are in a business setting 
you may call it whatever you wish. <laughs> I agree with you that our objection, our objective should be the things that, you know, fall under the goal. And so to me, I don't, it doesn't matter to me whether we. Listen, I told you it was going to be annoying. I will revise the slide for the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, go ahead. So one, um, one of the things that has kind of bugged me, kind of going on Sarah's theme, is, you know, we talk, we've talked a little bit about this already. I don't know if Liv belongs here, but talking about our committees and our liaisons and all the different kind of things that we have as a board, I'm wondering if one of our goals or objectives or strategic actions, whatever we want to call, what it should be for the year is to, to really kind of revisit what the board's charges of each of those groups and those liaison positions, which ones need to still exist, which ones maybe are, are you know, obsolete, if there are any. I mean, I know this conversation came up um, when Kristen gathered us for our first long range planning committee. We were talking about, you know, um, what is the mission of that group? How does it intersect with the building steering committee? How is any of that defined? I know we've talked about communications as well and how maybe that could live in a slightly different way with another liaison slash group or I'm just kind of talking in circles here, but basically I'm wondering if one of our goals should be to examine our own structure and make sure it's something um, that is both effective and efficient. Okay, uh, that is, I mean, I like goals that I think are uh, actionable and achievable, you know, so I had put that, those, that item as an agenda item for our board retreat. Um, I think it would be naive to suggest that we are going to solve um, and tie up all of those loose ends in a single retreat. And so if that was, if that work was initiated at our retreat, it's definitely something that we could then say, okay, you know, how do we carry this through and really make this um, a long term um, improvement cycle? Right. What so that I, so can I ask for a point of clarification? So from what you just said, I'm a little bit confused only because these goals are not to be accomplished at our retreat. They're been basically meant to no. set our direction for the year, right? Right. So, right. but to go back to how we're using the word objective and goal sure. flip-flopped, <laughs> our objective would be to uh, initiate board discussion centered around the roles and responsibility of each committee. Right. And then under that, we could have action items that, you know, we are going to re-examine the charge of each committee, for example, or we are going to define in policy the role of each liaison. Like those are very actionable mm -hmm. items that would be under that bigger umbrella. Yeah. I agree with that, Nick. Anybody else? So under the objective, which we're now calling goal, promote and grow district-wide culture and trust and transparency, do we want to define objectives that we think are going to be smart goals that are going to be something measurable and actionable. Go ahead, Sarah. I'm, I will wait. I got teacher patience for days. <laughs> this is like a half-formed thought and not really like a, a suggestion, but I think, it, I, I think it was last year that, Sandy, you guys presented the decision-making workshop last year. Was that last year or is that two years ago? Two years ago. Oh. Two. Okay. So, but that was a good example. Yep. So maybe – like a refresh of that it, along the same lines of like, are the things that we're trying to do that we set out to be working? Um, maybe like a review of that decision-making process and, and how it is working and if it's working or how it could be improved. 
Um, I don't want to create more work. So, so Sandy, Diane, I would look for maybe some feedback from you guys on that. I don't want to create unnecessary work, but I do, you know, this is something that comes up a lot, right? And we have a process and some people would say it's probably working. Some people would say maybe there's room for improvement. Um, so that, that's like one thought or suggestion. So I have a question for the full group, which is, do we feel like we should define some of those workshops now or should, are we all right if we just say four, that we want to have four staff driven workshops or like this is the part of this whole process where I don't know as a board how specific we want to get or need to get. And it's like Sarah just said, you know, she has an idea for a workshop that she thinks would be good for us to revisit as a board, but I would struggle, I think, to come up with like a whole list of workshop ideas, you know, on the fly. Sorry, let me just clarify. I don't necessarily even know that mine was an idea for a workshop, but just like, like an object, like something for us to, to improve on. And maybe that takes the form of a workshop and maybe it's just, you know, Sandy giving us an update at, at an upcoming meeting on how things are going. I don't know. But that was more of just like uh, something that I think would go work towards promoting and growing a district-wide culture of trust, transparency. But to answer your question, I think we should define the number of workshops, not necessarily be workshops. Okay. That's just my opinion. I would agree. I think April that we shouldn't define what they are yet because if these are going to partly be workshops with staff, I think that they might have some better ideas than we do about how we what we need to do a workshop on. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you on that and really like focus on this idea of trust, transparency, and collaboration. Like what are some really effective um, messages or information or protocols that the staff would want to share with us? You know, they know far better than we do. Um, but it's more about us making that a priority because we have a million things being thrown at us um, all the time. And so making sure that we, we've said this is a priority for us at our, as a, as a goal. And, you know, we're going to make sure that one of these quarterly workshops is really focused on something that the staff wants to present to us. Okay. So moving down the list, Sarah, do you want to say anything or um refocus the the budget process is there a way that we can reframe what we worked on last year um to expand it or not necessarily expand it that's not the right word but to make it relevant to what you think is necessary work for the finance committee if it falls under this promote, grow, uh, and grow district-wide trust, culture, and transparency? Um, I don't know that maybe, I, personally, I would just, I would just scrap the whole budget line from this goal. There might, okay. like, like, I think that part of, yeah, I would just, personally say let's just scrap it I mean we're gonna continue we're going to continuously improve it but for it to be something that I don't necessarily see it tying into that goal I guess this year what a Kristen yep. and you guys have thoughts on that yeah I can see taking that out I know what you're saying in terms of that goal I think maybe and I don't, again, I don't know if it's worth including as a goal, but going back to the 
trust and transparency if it's more of a communication piece around the budget than it is necessarily a budget piece per se. Yeah. Which I would say, Kristen, is, is di very different than where we were when that original goal was written. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, maybe it needs that needs to be a, a, its own goal in itself, right? To to improve communication across the district, and then one of the components of that is with the budget process. One of the components of that is with whatever, and so that just becomes its own sort of new goal on its own, rather than fitting under one of these. Yeah. Yeah, Alicia. Um, well, I don't know how this fits into this discussion, but one of the areas that I think that we can improve upon is hearing from staff about um, their budget concerns. And I think that when it's been a good year, that may not be highlighted as much as it was last year. And um, and then we were sort of scrambling to try to to try to make that happen, and it felt um, complicated because we didn't have a procedure in place for that to occur. And um, so I do think that there's room for improvement for that. Go ahead, Katie. I agree with that, Alicia, and I think the harder thing this year is at least last year we did have at the beginning of the budget process where we went into the buildings and met with the staff and we won't be able to do that this year so i think that almost makes us a little bit more important this year to find a a better process for that and this really touches on what i was trying to to say in my lead-in which is i would like for us to develop at least a few goals that we know are going to be modifications on what we would be able to do if we weren't experiencing a pandemic. And so, you know, do we develop a goal where we, the goal is to, is to maintain contact and, and get um, teacher feedback on their budget concerns. And we do that in the form of zoom, you know, we make sure that we offer those same listening sessions, um, and make those those Zoom listening sessions available to staff. And so now we're just taking something that we have done in the past, but we're modifying it and making sure that it's still a, a priority for, you know, at the committee level. Alicia. I, I, I think I, 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 so what I, my perception of what happened last year was that staff worked through the normal mechanisms until they realized that there was potentially a problem. And then they became more invested in the, in the process um, or had more um, desire to be heard, I guess, um, or need to be heard. And, um, and I don't mean that as a criticism, I just mean it was sort of a practical response to the, the reality of the times as they unfolded. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so I wonder almost if it should be like a developed and um, advertised protocol about, about how, and, and maybe it's like you suggest, but I think that communication to them is important about how it's gonna happen because the rolling emails is problematic for my perception for a number of reasons. And so I'd like that protocol to include, like if we get an email, this is how we will respond about budget issues. This is how we respond because um, I think I prefer to have, you know, some of that documented and, and explained publicly and, and, um, and I don't know that 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 the emailing allows that to happen. Okay, so what I'm hearing is is really that's two separate. So we so we could set a goal to 
to still maintain that init- those initial teacher outreach meetings. But then what you're saying is you would like to see a mechanism developed for um, communication between the staff and the finance committee and, and a out clearly outlined and communicated um, procedure for doing that at later points during the budget process. So I think that's fair. I think that's, I think that that is um, a really, I don't know, I'm, I'm searching for the words, but I think that that addresses a, a significant communication breakdown that we had last year. So seeking to improve that is definitely something that I would be in favor of. I agree. Good suggestion. Okay, so, oh, go ahead, Sandy, please. I, I think um, what we were just talking about is a good idea. And I think if we could also think about, because the administrators and the staff put so much time into the budget and then we pretty much hand it off to the board and then it becomes your budget and you work the budget and ultimately, hopefully at the end, we have a budget. I'm just wondering if we should revisit that whole process. Just, I don't think we have to take a lot of time, but just, you know, again, it, it, it's, it's sort of like if I'm a teacher, I give my budget to my building principal. And my building principal builds a school budget and then comes to the leadership council and certainly advocates for what he or she needs in her building. And then from there, as a team, the district-wide administrative team, really leadership council, they try to put together a budget that uh, makes sense for the straight face to get to the board as we present it to the council. So I would just, maybe we should just kind of look at that whole process. Does it still work or do we, do we need to make some changes? Maybe not, maybe so. I don't know if that is something that, um, this board would want to take on, but maybe we could intertwine that to what Alicia was just talking about as well. Just a thought. I think that's a good suggestion, Sandy. What, you know, one of the, um, the things that concerned me during the last process was that there seemed to be somewhat of a disconnect. And I don't think that anybody was operating in bad faith, but it, it just made me wonder like where the communication breakdown was. And, and so I think that, and I didn't like how it felt, honestly, the way the, the way it played out last year it was, I mean, of course it was really um, seemed dire at the, at, at the time. And so I think that that was part of it, but um, it didn't feel as collaborative as I would have liked it to have felt. And, um, and I, and I wonder if we improve that process, if, if it would, um, lead to less of the communications at the later end. Yeah, I think we definitely need to look, I mean, the, the process that we follow currently does not align to our written policy. So we need to, that, I mean, that should be an objective for this year is review okay. the finance policies. And I think there are two or three that kind of all touch on the same thing. And I think in doing so, Sandy, we will look at the whole end to end process and figure out cause part of that is just like timing. Like when do we have to, when do you have to have things to us? When do we have to have to, to town? But the rest of like the process can be built out as part of that too, I think. I think that's, I think those are some really great objectives um, to work toward. Um, is there anything else not related to having some, having a finite uh, established number of um, workshops and that finance, finance goal that we want to put under um, our first goal of promoting district-wide culture, trust and transparency? 
I'm having a hard time finding the wording because I heard what you said about Nick's suggestion, suggestion. So I'm thinking this is coming under an umbrella similar to what his suggestion, suggestion would. But would our DEI work come under here? The steering committee we're creating, the, I mean, that's, that's truly the purpose, right, is to create this culture of trust and collaboration among our community and our district. So I'm struggling with, that's what I'm sitting here, I've been thinking this whole time, how do we word it into a goal? But I think it goes there. I think that that is an excellent point um, and probably <laughs> something that we all should have, that should have been the first maybe thing that we all thought of given how hard we've all been working um, towards making sure that that project um, is a priority for us this year. So I 100% yeah. agree um, that there should be formalized wording in our goals related to that work. Yeah. So that will give us um, three objectives to work for um, under that goal. Um, I think the next goal of establishing a plan to address facilities and growth continues to be a goal. Um, and so it, I would certainly be in favor of keeping that and, and elaborating and continuing to work on that, that piece. And if we can spend the next 15 minutes kind of establishing some objectives, um, that we would like to see happen this year, that would be, um, we're setting ourselves up, we always do, with a lot of work, um, but you know, we have, we have big things that we're trying to do. And so um, go ahead, KT, and then uh, I'll make my suggestion. So go ahead. I was just gonna say that I liked Leanne's suggestion from earlier about putting it in there very specifically to adequately adequately fund our next steps, because that is the starting point of where we fell apart last year. So I think that needs to be really high up there. I agree with that suggestion. Um, I would also make a suggestion that we need to get on the same page with town council. And I don't think that any of us has all of the answers for what that looks like. Um, we all have the best intentions, um, but managing the varying pieces of information, not to mention that when we get together as two bodies, it's 14 people, um, you know, despite our best intentions, it was, um, I don't think everybody left with the same information last time that we tried to do a joint workshop. And so I would like to see us really think um, whether it's going back to the committee level or whether it's uh, at a liaison level, like how are we going to advance this project um, forward with the, our counterparts on the town council? Alicia. I just wanted to, um, I was going to say the, the same thing and I wanted to um, support that thought because that's ultimately why we failed, I think. Um, so I, I think that that's going to be of the highest priority. Okay, I, I, I certainly agree with that. We haven't failed. We just lost a little momentum. Sarah. I agree with that, and I don't. I don't think you. We've set on a date for the workshop, but maybe we can use or like the board retreat. What I was looking yep. for. If that happens in January, maybe we use some of that time to brainstorm how we progress that too. If if it's not too late. Well, hopefully it won't be too late. Um, <laughs> I know. Um, so I will, I will add that to my running agenda for the retreat um, right now and make sure that we carve out some time. Cause I agree. I think that that the seven of us together brainstorming and, and kind of trying to develop a path forward um, 
you know, rather than in pockets and, and in isolation. Cause like right now I feel like various committees have contact with town council for all kinds of different reasons. And it just happens right now that we have a lot of overlap and I'm, I'm thankfully, you know, I have a high level view of all of these micro interactions. Um, but I will fully admit making sure that all of these micro interactions are working uh, in conjunction with one another, and then also, you know, that that I really have a good feel for how the board wants to proceed is something that, you know, we all need to talk about. Um, and so making sure that we set that as a goal, and then I can, I, our first action item can be to discuss that at the board retreat. Any other thoughts about um, the facilities growth goal. Go ahead, Nick. So we had a small conversation about this um, earlier this week in long-term planning, and I'm just gonna float it out there to see people think. Um, <clears throat> in this second objective, which I guess will become a goal, um, <clears throat> the word growth, I'm just wondering how prominent that should be in that line, and here's why. Um, I feel like because this year has been so crazy, it's so difficult to evaluate what's going to happen to our enrollment because this year is basically an anomaly at this point. I'm just wondering if we need to reword this so that we're talking about kind of um, I know, assessing our facilities to ensure longevity and service to the town of Scarborough or something like that because I feel like the biggest issue here that that sometimes our overemphasis on growth is overshadowing is the fact that our, our buildings are at the K2 level in particular are old and the bricks are getting older with each passing day. And that's almost our bigger issue than what our enrollment may be projected to be in 2025. You know what I mean? So I'm just wondering if maybe we need to pull out that word and kind of resmith this so that it's a, it's a, a more, a more all encompassing kind of goal about addressing our facility needs to ensure the adequacy of future service that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point. I think um, we inadvertently uh, ended up working against ourselves by creating too much focus on growth um, that, you know, we can have all the best projections. Um, and if people aren't compelled by that, then they have a reason to say no to us and overlook what you're, what I, you know, what you're saying is our real priority and our real problem is these aging infrastructures and inadequate facilities. And there's no disputing um, that our facilities are not serving our students in some of our buildings. Precisely. Go ahead, Sandy. Yeah, April, um, the other thing I'm thinking about is all the good work that you know the school department did with that work, and is there a way to, um, okay, so in the perfect world, right, where, the, where a department of the town, and ultimately what we want is for the community and the, and the town to support the facility needs on the school side. And, I think sometimes we run up to this roadblock, like as a school department, we, we know what we need, we're gonna go after it, but it's gonna be a way that both, I think the town and the school um, can come up with a strategic plan for the community on you know, what's, what is gonna be the top priority and then what's gonna be the second priority and the third priority as both a school and a town working together. That might be too unrealistic but that to me feels um, much more strategic and working as one town together. And I, I don't know if that could ever be a goal, but I hate to see us kill ourselves on this second goal here in growth and then find out that it's never going to happen because it's, it may not be, and maybe rightfully so, a priority with the whole community and with the council. So I just, 
think in a way if we could work, and I know we all had good intentions to work together, but is there a way to make it more strategic, more as a town strategic plan, growth plan um, as a group? Alicia, go ahead. So I, I agree with that and disagree with that in part. I, I mean, the I think we realize that we need the, the town to set the priorities. I think our disadvantage is that we, um, the library has this, what I guess what I'd call an advocacy group for their project. And, um, you know, where we don't have that from my perspective. Uh, um, and so, and so I think that that's a need in terms of, I mean, we know a school is a need, but we're not or as organized um, as, as ready, especially now that the building um, steering committee is on hiatus. And so um, I think that I think it's important that the town takes the lead, but I also think it's important that we advocate for our needs in an organized fashion. Okay, Kristen and then Sarah. We um, talked about that a little bit in our long range planning meeting as well. And I think that, you know, the idea is we do need to just advocate for what we need. Um, whatever the town's priorities are, you know, we need to be speaking up for what we want. And I think that, you know, if you watch the last meeting that the town had on the comp plan, it was said a couple of times when they were talking about the school, that they're trying to stay in their own lane. And I think we need to just change that so they don't feel that they're intruding on our space because it does have to be a collaboration to some extent. So I don't know, I mean, I don't know how that works in there, but I think we need to invite them into this conversation in a way that we maybe haven't done in the past. So they do feel a little more connected to it because I think they do feel connected to other projects and not this one. We did have a, a town council member on the building steering committee and so yeah. and, and invited the entire town council to every meeting. So it's, it, it, I don't understand what that disconnect is, Kristen, but I agree with you. I don't understand what it is either, Alicia. Um, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that, but it's there for sure. Um, well, I mean, the, the fact that we had some roadblocks and had some challenging conversations with them, um, their composition has changed, their members of their finance committee have changed, their liaison and our liaison have changed. Like we have some opportunity there for some new relationships um, and different interactions, new interactions. Um, and so I think, you know, finding a way to capitalize on some of those new um, avenues, for lack of a better word, um, I think I think we all agree that that is something that we as a board want to prioritize. Um, half of that relationship is out of our control. Um, and so I, the, the tricky thing about this in terms of it being a goal is, you know, it's thinks to set a goal that is dependent on an entire and a body that's entirely out of our control. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that our efforts um, shouldn't be focused on improving that and, and really identifying why there was such a breakdown um, or have been a series of breakdowns maybe is a better way of putting it in the past. Mm -hmm. So we are coming up on seven o'clock. Does anyone have any final comments that they want to add um, centered around our goals and our objectives? Go ahead, Sarah. Just 
taking notes, and I know Leanne was too, I think. Um, but I just want to make sure I captured this correctly. Are we saying that we want to put all of our communication objectives underneath that first goal? Or do we want like a specific communication goal? I think we were putting our communication objectives under that first goal. Okay. Do people agree? Okay, but then the, the, we should, but we want to create a third goal around the equity, or that goes under there too. That's a good question. Here, I popped it in under that, um, in the notes that I was taking, only because it felt like it really does tie back to that district-wide culture because it is shifting the culture and it is a goal. But maybe once it's all like laid out, we can look at it and come back and decide if we need to break it apart. Cool. Yeah, just given the importance of it, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. leaning towards thinking that it should be a standalone goal. Um, but what's, what's the next step with these April to let's, to finalize them and so I think um, I will go ahead and um, incorporate this conversation the best I can. Um, and I will take a crack at making that a, a more final version. Um, and then I will open it to edits and, um, you know, we can edit it. And then um, I'll make it part of my chair's report once we feel like it's, you know, a finalized um, document. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a few minute break before seven o'clock. Um, Kelly, do you want us to jump off this link and then join on the other link or should we stay on this link? No, go to the next link. Cause that's the one that's shared with the okay. public. Okay. Perfect. All right, everybody, I'll see you in a few. Mrs. Giftos? Here. Dr. Gill? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Mr. Bennett? Here. Ms. Giftos? Here. Join me in Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any adjustments to the agenda? We have one down on 10.4, uh, the minutes. We need a little more time, so we'd like to put that off until November 19th, and that's 
Any other adjustments? If not, we'll continue on. At this point.